The stock market is on track for its best year since 2013, but what should we expect from the markets in the new year? Let's bring in Dave Calloway, CEO of The Street, and John Ede, CEO of Argus Research. And John, Dave, let's first establish how you guys know each other. College roommates, is that right? Well, we've known each other since college. Uh, Scott, yeah, we were roommates. We can remember when the Dow Jones average was at 1,500. Ah. And uh, interest rates were double digits. Uh -huh. Long time ago. Well, there's a lot to talk about, of course. Let's re reflect on 2017. It was a much better year than strategists had expected. Dave, what are your thoughts? Well, it's, yeah, it, obviously we were very cautious going into the year with Trump. He told us not to worry. Turns out we didn't need to worry. Markets had a, a, a remarkable year. Uh, got the tax plan done. Nobody expected that to be done. Infrastructure coming up next year. So from a market perspective, if you take away all the other noise and, and scandal and stuff, uh, it's been a, a remarkable year. John, how about you? Well, Scott, we were in the group that were bullish coming into 2017, right? The easy call is to say market's going to grow 10% a year because that's what they do. We came out with a 12 to 15% forecast for 17. It's obviously doing better than that, but looking ahead to 2018, we remain bullish. Mm -hmm. And how do we get to that bullish sentiment? I mean, what sectors should you be playing in 2018? Well, the fundamentals um, are you know, certainly focused on, on strong earnings growth, uh, good GDP growth. Mm -hmm. Dave touched on the tax plan. That's gonna help earnings. And we think interest rates are still gonna remain historically low, so it'll be a, another favorable backdrop for investing in stocks. Dave, it's interesting, of course, we had North Korea worries this year, the Mueller investigation, yet none of these things move stocks in any meaningful way to the downside. Were you surprised by that kind of move? Not really, Scott. You know, geopolitical concerns are always there, right? It's, it really depends on whether the market is ready to listen or not. When, it, when it's ready, it's going to start to listen to that stuff. The market was singularly focused on, uh, uh, on Trump achievements, basically taxes this year. Um, and it's going to be focused on infrastructure next year. I think we'll start off the year strong. I'm less bullish than John. Um, we may end up the year up. I think the midterms are going to cause considerable angst on Wall Street, especially if we start to see the Democrats picking up some steam uh, in the summer. So uh, I'm, I think we're going to finish this year strong. Santa Claus, Santa Claus rally still to come. First quarter could be good, and then I think we're going to start to hit some headwinds. John, what do you think? I mean, volatility was non-existent, as you know, in 2017. Do we start to see more swings as we head into the new year? Well, Scott, I think it's going to depend on a few factors. Um, you know, one would be what the new Federal Reserve chairman is going to do. Mm -hmm. We think he'll move deliberately and, and based on the data, but if inflation starts to pick up, you know, we may start to see interest rates rising faster than, than uh, we, we currently anticipate. And if you see that, all bets are off, right? The concern about rates, uh, and particularly yields, bond yields spiking, uh, could really be a, a, a major concern that could create volatility in the new year. Right. Uh, however, there still is a lot of slack in the labor market. So again, that's just a, a, a risk that we're looking for. And as Dave mentioned earlier, you know, the market needs to be ready for these risks. And right now, volatility is so low um, that that would be a big surprise. And you could see that play out in the market. Yeah, you can't expect. We've seen a lot of years, ups and downs. But this year, when we saw 20, 25, 30 records. I mean, we'll probably still got two or three more to go before the end of this year. You know, that's unusual. You can't expect that to continue, I don't think. So Dave, what's the, the main factor you're gonna be watching in 2018? Uh, I think I'm gonna be watching the midterms the most. Obviously there's, there's you know, the crazy stuff, you know, the Bitcoin. I mean, I think that's a classic bubble. Mm -hmm. and. I love the fact that it, everyone's having fun doing it right now. I just I, I worry about that, and I worry about the potential systemic implications of it. It doesn't look like there's any. Everyone I ask says there are none, but it looks like you know I'm worried about that. That's something I'm watching closely. Employment, obviously, like John said, as long as that's strong, you know the economy is going to be pretty good. But the market has gone up so far, so fast that any sort of increase in volatility, spike in bond yields craziness from, uh, from North Korea, uh, implosion of, of, uh, of a Bitcoin bubble could cause mm. Wall Street to start listening to the doomsayers again. Yeah. Well, John, Dave mentioned Bitcoin. What are you telling clients about the <laughs> cryptocurrency? Uh, we're looking more at the fundamentals in the, in the stock markets right now. That's really for the speculators. And a lot of our clients are really the, 
the, the long-term buy and hold. And so we're telling them to look for companies that are really growing their dividends at, at, at a double-digit pace. You don't see that in just a couple of sectors. You can see that uh, across the marketplace, mm -hmm. but that's a good signal for a, a bright outlook for a company if management is increasing the dividend at least 10% a year. All right, we'll be watching how it all plays out, but before we go, fun fact, two other successful roommate combos, Tommy Lee Jones and Al Gore, Christopher Reeve and Robin Williams. So there you go, guys. And <laughs> Todd, you can be Christopher Reeve. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks so much. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Scott.